Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today for our COVID-19 response workshop. My name is Jeff White and I'm Surefire's Director of Customer Success. Um, we're very fortunate to have two industry veterans present uh, for us today. And as the saying goes, they've been around the block a few times, they've seen a thing or two. Um, they've both been instrumental in helping me and my team support our clients over the years. So let me introduce first up Mark Richardson, who's a highly regarded author, speaker, and business advisor. He's a fantastic educator and guest lectures for MBA and other programs at Georgetown University, George Washington University, the University of Maryland, Penn State, and Virginia Tech. As a leading business advisor, Mark has worked with many leading remodelers, manufacturers, and distributors, and he serves on boards for GE Capital, the Better Business Bureau, Mosby Building Arts, as well as many others. We also have Bob Sheehan, who's Surefire Senior VP of Client Services, I was fortunate enough to have been hired by Bob six years ago, and Bob has been with Surefire since the beginning. He's been a fantastic teacher and mentor to not just me, but many others at Surefire. And Bob is an integral part of Surefire's team managing our national and enterprise clients, as well as providing training and guidance to Surefire's internal teams. So with that, let me turn it over to Bob uh, to get us started. Good afternoon, everybody, and, and thanks for coming to uh, what we're calling the COVID-19 workshop. Um, what we're what we're going to try to get done today is is some some exchange of information, right? We we end up being in a in a position here where a lot of things come to us about what's going on. We talk to a lot of people, um, and so we thought it was appropriate to try to communicate as much of that as we could, and and to bring Mark in and communicate. Um, a, a lot of his perspective on what's going on out there and ways that uh, we can, you know, help everybody kind of get to the other side of this. Uh, we've created a, a COVID-19 resource center on our website. Um, so if you're if you're looking for any uh, specific information, some of the things that we talk about today will actually already be there. Um, but we've got a, a website page called shofirelocal.com slash coronavirus. And uh, for those of you who are clients of ours, uh, I know some of you aren't, but those of you who are, um, you have a digital marketing strategist uh, that you work with on a, on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. Uh, that person, uh, we're, we're setting those people up as a, a place where you can get information as well, making sure that they have um, enough information and resources to be able to you know, help you get what you need. Could you? Yep. And, and so the, the, the kind of the focus of Mark's piece of this is how to come out of this better than you were before. Um, we're, we're kind of seeing this as an opportunity right now uh, to, to take advantage of some things that are going on in government funding um, in kind of the, we've got this interim period where we're, we're getting ready to um, have things get a little bit more normal in the, in the coming weeks and months. And, and so there's an opportunity here to do that. And as I said before, we're seeing a lot of things and we're talking to a lot of people. And so we're going to try to try to share as much of that as we can um, at the end of this. And then what we'll do is we'll end up distributing a lot of this information uh, through the emails and through the website and, and other ways that we have to do that. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn this over to Mark Richardson. And Mark, we're, we're very happy to have you here and appreciate you coming to help us do this. And, and with that, um, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Bob. And, and certainly thank you, Jeff and everyone. Uh, these are very, very challenging times. So I, I do not want for a second to kind of lessen some of the pain that, you know, not only people are experiencing in terms of the business, but also in terms of personal lives. You know, however, I, I, I do think there is hope. There is uh, uh, kind of an importance to look past this, not just in it. Uh, I think those companies that, number one, first and foremost, are focused on survival, they're going to be kind of positioning themselves to kind of catapult, catapult or launch themselves out of this. You know, this even this title, Survive to Thrive, uh, I, I actually was asked in 2009 to do a 10-city tour with SunTrust Bank. And I traveled around uh, the, the mid-Atlantic states talking to hundreds of their clients in, 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 in presentations about how to go about not only 
uh, surviving kind of what they were coming out of, but how do you go about positioning? So, you know, needless to say, this is pretty off the, uh, off the shelf kind of relevant stuff, but I share that because, you know, if you've been in business for long periods of time, most businesses have certain cycles. I mean, I got in this business back in the 80s and interest rates were 16, 17%. Uh, we hit the kind of recessionary times in the 90s when our business literally dropped by 50% and had to add new products and services. We had Y2K and then 9-11 and of course the 2008 crash. So I'm not trying to compare necessarily the virus times that we're in to all those others. But what I will say is there is a pattern here. And that pattern is those businesses that do the right thing. You know, when you look back two years from now, back at where we are today, you will see how much better I think you, you can and you are. So with that being said, I mean, I think I tend to be kind of a metaphor and an analogy guy. And I think as you think about the conditions that we're in right now, I think it is a survival mode. And I think the more that you position the business for that, the more likely I think you will be able to really take off and, 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 and thrive in the future. So let me start with, I'm going to kind of the, the purpose of my session is not just specific ways that you will thrive or get better, but it's also understanding business a little bit better. I think most of you got into businesses because you had kind of a love of either the craft or a love of working with clients or, you know, just a little bit of entrepreneurial spirit. You didn't get in because you were an expert in business. So I'm going to try to at least give you some, a little bit of business insights to help you kind of sort this thing out as well. So the first thing I'll say is, you know, as you listen to me speak or Bob speak or certainly Jeff or anyone else, all businesses are not created equal. Uh, if you think about this, you know, some of the businesses out there, quite frankly, are breathing out of a straw. I mean, they had a tough time in, in the end of last year and Q1 of this year. And as a result, you know, hitting this is especially challenging. It's kind of a rebuilding mode. Survival, cash is king. Every bit of cash is really king. You have kind of maybe more of a, a bunker plan in place. And, you know, now it's time to get kind of really scrappy. And the sad thing is you've got to get scrappy while you can't even be in the home at the same time. So it's really, really difficult. So as you're listening to some of these things today, I think you have to ask yourself, you know, am I in the rebuild mode? Uh, some of you are in the enhancement mode. Yeah, you've got, you know, a little bit of cash and you've got the backlog. Uh, you're doing things that you can do a little bit more virtually. So you're in more of a mode that you're able to weed out and you're able to kind of spend some time and energy just investing in some new technologies. For example, like the Surefire digital platform uh, is some interesting technologies to, to weave in. Uh, maybe you're having to adjust your profit goals for this year. You might have been expecting, you know, a decent profit year, and now it's going to be very, very modest. Uh, but in your case, maybe it's more about positioning for 2021. There is another group out there, and it's a small percentage, but it is another group. It's maybe 10% of the businesses that say, you know, we're in pretty good shape right now. And if this kind of challenging time lasts two, three, four months, we just need to kind of push the pause button and we can actually gain market share. And, you know, this, this talent challenge that we've had, we're going to be able to acquire talent because, you know, we're going to be having some unemployment out there uh, and we're going to invest and take the business to the next level with new products and services. So the point of all this is simply that you've got to know who you are to know what to do. So this whole notion of survive to thrive. I'm going to talk a little bit about the environment, a little bit of how to position your business, and most importantly, about you and certainly your leadership. So let's just talk a little bit about the environment. The first and foremost, you've got to think about this almost like navigating through this crisis. I mean, in the best way I can think about it is we're in incredible stormy waters out there. And when you're in stormy waters, in hurricane waters, You've got to be much smarter, you, your work ethic, you've got to be 24-7, you've got to be focused 
you got to be thinking team sport. You've got to think different because of the nature of the environment we're in. The second one, and Bob's going to get into this at the end, that's so important. The best of the best already have their applications either ready to go or in their banker's hands to be able to go. You have got to be able to leverage some of the government aid. And obviously, you need to be able to understand it a little bit, but it's that government aid that's going to give you the lifeline that will buy you time. And that's what it's going to buy you. It's not a question of philosophically whether I want loans or not loans. The more you understand it, it is going to buy you time. And I encourage everybody to, to get in the queue, be aggressively focused on that element. And then the last one that I think in navigating is, is really you've got to adjust or change. And I'm going to talk more about that. But, you know, if you're not going to change in this, you will probably not make it. And change happens in so many different levels. I was talking to one of my thought leaders uh, the other day, and he was saying, you know, creating change within your organization, one of the positives about, one of the few positives about what we're experiencing right now, it's not hard to navigate change in your organization because it's being driven from the outside, not necessarily pulled from the inside. So three ingredients for business survival. And by the way, the flip side of this is business success as well. And I want to talk about them because I think if you can – clearly focus on these three things. One is having the right mindset. Two is being fundamentally fit. And three is you've got to adjust and change. Now, if you're changing and you're fit, but you don't have the right attitude and mindset, you will fail. If you have the right mindset and you're fundamentally fit, but you're not adjusting what you've done in the past, you will fail. And the reason I say that is these are puzzle pieces that all fit together but you've got to have all three, not two out of three is not going to do it. You need all three to be successful. So taking the right mindset for a minute, you got to start with a positive attitude. You know, you've heard the adage, misery loves company, but the successful people choose not to participate in that misery. So you've got to have positive attitude. You've got to be kind of the voice of reason. You know, you've got to be uber communicating within your organization and, and be that perspective. You also have to realize to get through these stormy waters and everything we're going on, it's time for synergistic thinking. It's not time for dictatorship. It's time for a team sport. It's time to rally everybody together and have synergistic thinking. Work ethic needs to be higher. It needs to be over the top. Even though you're hunkered down and you're not able to go into the office, that doesn't mean you don't have good solid 10, 11, 12 hours days to get through this. Now, the work ethic might be focused on training and learning and investing in new things, but that work ethic still needs to be very high. And the pace is all part of it. You know, don't knee jerk too fast, but also don't be too slow. So all of these things fit together and they represent the right mindset. The second is you've got to be fundamentally fit in your business. Now I wrote a book and certainly friends at Surefire will send you copies of my book if you're having conversations with them. But you know, the How Fitting Your Business book I wrote in large part because I realized while many people were out there doing it, they didn't really know what fit is. So what I did was it's kind of like going to the doctor and having your blood pressure and cholesterol checked. So I created 10 criteria in business, gave you an ability to score it, just like, again, checking your blood pressure. But most importantly, about 50% of the book is a prescription of how to improve the individual scores. Now, what I will say more than ever right now, as I look at those businesses out there, and I think 50%, 75%, I don't know what percentage, are going to navigate through all this, they are fundamentally fit businesses. Those that aren't will probably not make it through the challenges that we're in right now. So the next level is change. Now, the best way to think about change is to actually compare change from the past to the present. Compare it in terms of your client, your marketing, in terms of some of your strategy. So in the past, going back 10, 15 years, I mean, it was just a, a just do it mentality. They were seeing a lot of appreciation in their home and therefore why not just do it? Where right now there's a lot more discussion. Now you need to have processes in place to be able to kind of shepherd the client through the decision and not just jam it down their throat like we did in the past. In the past, your clients 
We're willing to take risks. Where today, risk is going to be especially important, especially with some of the financial challenges that everybody's going through. In the past, the clients would find you where you have to find the client. You've got to be uber focused, especially when it comes to the knowledge of the digital elements within the business. You've got to understand the, the dashboard of your business when it comes to marketing so you can be able to find the right client. Uh, in the past, high touch marketing, and now it's more certainly a blend of high tech marketing as well. Here's an interesting one. Most home improvement businesses going back 10, 20, 30 years, it was, they were businesses that were ripe and, and essentially driven in large part by personal referrals and different kind of interaction, word of mouth things. We're now, it's more online reviews. Matter of fact, Google had an interesting, uh, interesting uh, consumer survey that they said homeowners today put more value on an online review than they do a personal referral. I mean, that is huge. And if you're not positioned right for good online reviews, you're going to fall short. And then lastly, in the past, we focused on the what. And what was here's the project sitting across the kitchen table, sweating on the kitchen table, trying to get it to close, where today we need to focus not just on the what, but also the how you go about selling. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But the whole virtual selling, this is the perfect time to invest the time and energy into some of the virtual selling. You know, we actually have a little alliance of technology group and the group Engage, I-N-G-A-G-E, is an excellent online virtual selling tool that can integrate into your business. I encourage you to reach out to some of these partners who have tools that can help you be more successful in more challenging times. So I want to move to how to think about positioning your business for a minute here. Now, as you think about the positioning, I like to think about it in kind of pillars. So think about like five pillars that hold up and that you need to position your business. So I'm going to talk just a few minutes about each one of these, but we're going to talk about the products. We're going to talk about your team. We're going to talk about your clients. We're going to talk about technology and then strategic partnerships. So let me talk first about your partners, your products. So the first thing, and actually Google did a consumer survey. They said consumers want easy. Is your product easy to buy? Is it easy to understand? There's a level of transparency that certainly needs to be there. I think now more than ever, you need to have a little bit more of a diversified portfolio of products and services. As we come out of this challenging time, I think that we're in now, you're going to need as much as anything, a balance of smaller scale and larger scale projects, projects that are emergency driven type projects and discretionary, discretionary projects. Uh, the third element is is you need to have more virtual kind of nature to, to what you're doing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but you've got to be able to communicate. You've got to be able to integrate with the client online. Uh, number two is your team. So all A players on your team. You know, it's not good enough anymore to have B players, C players. You know, just because they're good people does not mean. Now, the good news in what we're experiencing, I think the whole talent dynamic is going to be much easier moving forward. Uh, you also are going to see a different level of commitment from the team as a result of going through these challenging times together. And again, now more than ever, it's got to be a team sport. They've got to process systems that are integrated and everybody's kind of rowing together. Number three kind of pillar is your client. Uh, your client is going to be your lifeblood moving forward. But first and foremost, you've got to know who your client is. I really think there's going to be, as a result of what's going on, a little bit of a shift in the demographic. A lot of your older clients who have maybe been more challenged in terms of uh, some of the things happening in the market, they may not spend as much as those wanting to finance and the younger clients who see, you know, having 40, 50 years left to be able to, do things. So you, you need to understand who the clients are, what the type of projects are, I think, moving forward. The next one is that you need to be more client centric. You know, I think we've been so running fast and furious that you need to not have your clients be strangers to you. 
I think your opportunity during these challenging times that we're in right now are a great opportunity to really get out and care and get out and touch those past clients, those past prospects, so that when we come out of this, uh, you're, you're going to be more successful. And then the last one is start to also diversify in terms of the client expenditures. It might be, for example, if you focus on roofing, what else can you do when you're there? You know, the reality is that client's going to be spending a certain amount of money, and the more of that dollar that you get, you can see growth by not even increasing your client base, but increasing your client expenditure, and that can be part of your success coming out of this. Number four is your technology. Now, we used to say for many years it revolutionized the industry. Then for the last 10 years, we say it has revolutionized. But now more than ever, you've got the time. You've got a gift of time. You've got to invest the time and energy into technologies. Now, some of this might be just your learning curve. Some of it might be just doing R&D. Some of it might be just doing demos with, you know, some of your texting partners, for example, like Marlamar or organizations, obviously, like Surefire or Engage, or even looking at some of the different financing kind of technology-driven uh, uh, tools available like service finance. There's a lot of different strategic alliances, but now is the time to invest the time and energy and a little bit of money into positioning for the future. The other thing I would encourage is try to pick and choose the focus of your technologies as it benefiting the client, not just you. I think some of the visualization tools, some of the ways that you can eliminate and make it easier for the client to, to sign up on projects, those kind of things, those are all things that are benefits to the client. So try to le leverage technology. And certainly the last but not least is the virtual mastery. Now I've actually done several demos with companies that are doing more online virtual selling and they can do it in less time, they can do it just as effectively in a very personalized way, if in fact you know how to do it. Don't just assume that if you're thrown a soccer, soccer ball just because you can play football that you're gonna be good at soccer, you're not. It's a whole new, new way of doing things, and I would argue the key is mastering it if you're gonna be successful moving forward. My number five pillar here that I want to touch on is strategic partnerships. I think at least through challenging times, one of the things that it does for us is it makes us look at our relationships differently. It makes, it, makes us care about things differently. And specifically, I want you, everyone listening to this, this particular webinar, I want you to wipe out of your vocabulary the word vendor and replace it with strategic alliance or partnership. And what happens is when you change what you call somebody, you start to look at them different. You look at win-win solutions. You look at ways that you can market together. You look for ways that you can leverage each other's tools to have more success. You also need to adjust your thinking in terms of the competitors out in the marketplace. You know, get more engaged right now more than ever with NARI, National Association of Modeling Industry. Get engaged with some of the, uh, the, the roundtable groups. There's a bunch of different roundtable groups out there that are starting to bubble and form. And I think the more that you do this, we're actually launching a virtual roundtable group with professional remodeler called Remodeling Mastery. It's playing off of the Remodeling Mastery podcast series. It's going to be a whole series of smaller groups that are going to be trying to not necessarily be out on islands on their own. They're trying to be allies with each other. And the third element that you're going to get, I think, more from strategic partnerships and alliances is education. Now more than ever, take advantage of the online education that's available. Every one of these folks out there, they have those tools, and now is the time to really leverage it, make it an integral part of your training, because training is an investment not an expense. So I think as we think about all this, it's all great to talk about technology, it's all great to talk about products, but more than ever, what's gonna get you through this is gonna end up being your leadership. If you really think about those companies that are the most successful, the great ones, not just the good ones out there, 
the, the difference between good and great is oftentimes in the leadership of the company. So when you look at the mirror, the first thing I would say is, do you have the right mindset? You know, are you communicating? Are you positive? Are you the voice of reason? Are you giving people hope in terms of what's going on out there? Because that's what they need more than ever. You know, ultimately, the people follow leaders, not companies. And if you can position yourself and invest in yourself and be a better leader, that will help you not only survive, but thrive. The second is, you're so focused on the short term right now, it's so hard to think about what this might look like coming out of it. But I would encourage, start to literally invest more time and energy in three months from now. What does that look like? Start to sketch that out. What does a year from now look like? And what you'll find is if you know where you're heading, you can actually create a roadmap to help you get there. And if you don't have that roadmap, whether you're going to the mountains or the seashore, you're going to be wandering out there, and that wandering is going to be very costly and ineffective. So I think the mo more you have an understanding of the short, medium, and long term, you'll be successful. And lastly, you know, the best leaders out there that I know, and thankfully I work with some of the best, they are students of success. They truly believe that success is not a noun. Success is a verb. It's what you do that makes you successful. And I think the more that you can be a sponge for learning, the wiser you will be and the more likely you'll get through with the challenges that we're, we're talking about. So I want to just touch on some ways that I think for the companies that survive and make it through this, we will be better. So the first one is it's a gift of time. How many of you three months ago were saying that you were time starved, saying that you didn't have time for that. You were kind of burning the candle at both ends. Well, if you're hunkered down and sequestered in your home right now, you cannot tell me you're time starved. Uh, yes, you're very busy working on different things, but you have a gift of time. So it is a gift, and the question is, how are you using, how are you spending this gift of time? Uh, in my book, The Art of Time Mastery, which again is also a gift from Surefire, if you want to have access to it or go on Amazon and get it, it's a wonderful way to spend a little bit of time because it'll allow you to get even more of a gift once we get out of it. The second is the relationships. You know, now is the time that you will have deeper and better relationships when you come out of it. Now is the time you know who are supporting you or who are just taking advantage of you. Those relationships, whether they're with your team or your clients, or whether with strategic alliances or your community, you know, now is the time to really invest the time putting in and making those relationships super strong. The third element I think that you'll be better is your team, your culture, and your talent. First of all, as we said before, you can really do a deep dive in your team. And unfortunately, based on some of the short-term challenges, some of them aren't going to make it. The culture can be developed. There's a lot of virtual meetings and, and even virtual lunches and happy hours that different people are doing, even though they're not physically together. Do some of those things so that you can still maintain a really strong culture. And then lastly, that labor shortage that you've been talking about for the last three years as a, as a ball and chain from keeping you to grow, that will not be the case anymore. As we come out of this, there will be talent available. The best of the best, some of them out there, will not be having a job. So if you're a really strong company, be a net magnet for that talent and start to even now communicate and leverage the time communicating on social media that when we get out of this, you want to have opportunities to have a, a, a coffee and a lunch and discuss the possibilities of coming on board with your team. The fourth element, and I've touched on this before, but I've been talking for the last five years about leveraging these technologies to make your business better. Leveraging certainly some more of the digital marketing, becoming a master at online reviews and on social media, but also virtual selling. You know, there are companies out there that have mastered, but that are so far ahead of the curve than you, they're actually in the mode of doing the virtual selling right now. And as I mentioned before, I would encourage 
reaching out to one of our alliances, Engage, and they will be able to help at least you to understand what the possibilities are. The fifth one is being more client-centric. Now is not the time to be a stranger with your clients. Now is not the time, quite frankly, to be critical of your clients who want to push the pause button because they're a little nervous having you around. You've got to go overboard having empathy, go overboard being client-centric, making sure the job sites, if you are doing anything on an emergency basis, that you're uber safe in terms of that client experience. But most importantly, don't be a stranger. Keep in touch with those clients, and I think that will help you. Also, the products and services. You know, your product and service, your process will be better if you focus on, on developing. And then lastly, you're, you're, it's you. You know, how will you be better at the end of this? If you focus on the right things, you will have this. So at the point of all this simple uh, uh, list here is if you focus on kind of positioning yourself right now, these are stormy waters, you have the government and adjust the changes that you have to get to it, and then you will in fact find that things will be better at the, on, when we come out of this on the back end. So a couple of action steps as I wrap up here. Number one is you're not all equal, and therefore, if you're in the rebuild or the hints or the growth category, you have got to adjust your action steps in line with where you are. Don't, if you're, if you're in a rebuild mode, don't just assume that you're going to be doing that, uh, those things that you can do in a growth mode type of company. It's not going to be successful. So a few action steps. One is you've got to survive. You know, this is an industry with really scrappy people. There are people that can survive it, but you've got to survive yourself personally in your team if you're going to survive. The second is you've got to have the right mindset. You know, if you don't believe you're going to get through this, you're not going to be able to get through it. So you've got to have the right mindset. You also have to think medium and long term. Invest, invest. Now, investing does not have to be a huge war chest of money. Investing is time and energy. This is a perfect time to really sharpen your digital marketing acts. This is a perfect time to start to learn and experiment with vi virtual selling type of tools, but it takes time and energy to start to do that. And last but not least, certainly, is stay healthy. You know, you need to really adhere to all of the guidelines. And Americans tend to be a little bit like cowboys, so they're out there doing things, quite frankly, that aren't necessarily the safest things to do. But don't put yourself in that position. You've got to go overboard with yourself and your team and your family and certainly with your clients to say, stay healthy. So I want to kind of summarize with this last kind of photograph here. And that is, you know, when I think about the home improvement, I think about the remodeling industry. I think of it in the context of almost like an apple orchard. When you think back to 2004, 2005, the go-go times, we had our apple orchards out there. We had apples all over the trees. Those apples were falling on the ground. We had an abundance of them. We had an abundance of apples. Some of them had worms, but it was easy. We just bent over and just filled our basket with the apples. We didn't even have to pick the apples off the tree. Then we got up into 2006, 2007, where the apples weren't so much on the ground. And then all of a sudden we had to stand up and pick them off the tree. And then we hit 2008, the crash. We hit the crash where all of a sudden there was a drought. We didn't have any apples, but we had to get up on ladders. We had to have team kind of someone on the ladder, someone on the ground. And those that could get through at least some of that scarcity got through it just fine and the apples were there. And then gradually, gradually, 2009, 2010, 2011, the apples started to come back. They started to come back. So March Madness, 2020, we hit the wall. We hit the wall and we had a horrific, obviously, virus weave into place, which created uh, this impact. And it was almost like a storm came through in this apple orchard. I truly believe, and I want you to believe, the fundamental orchards are strong. The apple orchards are strong. We may lose a few trees, but the fundamental orchards are strong. Homeowners need you. Homeowners are not going to move out of their home and move into a cave. Homeowners are not going to all of a sudden 
become masterful at doing roofing or siding or kitchens or bathrooms. They're going to need you more than ever as we come out of this. So it's important, I think, for you at least to have that image that these fundamental orchards are going to survive if, in fact, you take good care of yourself and take good care of the business and do the right chess moves moving forward, you're going to see the level of success. So I want to just close with this. You know, I feel you should feel very fortunate and blessed that you chose the home improvement industry as your vocation. You know, it's one that creates joy, but it also creates shelter for your clients. And that's really, really important. And I think as a result of that, you need to be committed to doing what it takes to get through this, position yourself, come out of the back end, and then kick it and ultimately thrive. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, my Surefire team next and uh, let, let you take it from there. Very good. Well, th thank you very much, Mark. I, I really appreciate you coming on the, the webinar and helping us with that. I, I can I can tell you that it, listening to that was was interesting for me and putting it in context of what's going on with me and the clients right now. Um, I, I hear, you know, I've been basically talking to clients for the last two weeks, morning, noon and night. I've been on the phone literally all day, every day. And the questions I'm getting revolve around those things that you're talking about. How do I how do I get through this? What what how do I get to the other side? What should I be doing, right? What do I do with this time that I've got now? That you know I've got things to to think about. What you know how should I focus that? So I, I think there was a lot of interesting information there, a lot of very useful information, and I and I hope the folks on the uh, the webinar today are you know going to take some of that away and and put a lot of that to use. Um, this has been one of the more uh, attended webinars that we've run in a long time. There's, a, there's a, a lot of information out there and a lot of people are trying to get as much information as they can to try to figure out, okay, what's next? What should, what should I be doing? So we thought we would, we would, at the end of this, for the next you know, four or five slides here, just go through and, and highlight some of the opportunities that are there in the, in the legislative arena and what might be available to people to help, uh, you know, to get through this and and answer some questions, and then we're going to be able to to send this out to you guys so that you have, um, you know, an ability to go back go back and look at this. You don't have to kind of write this down. We'll we'll send it out afterwards and you can take a look. Um, but there's a there's a big program out there right now for literally the the government is putting two trillion dollars into the economy. Uh, to to keep things moving while we're in this kind of you know strange place with uh, you know social distancing, the government is putting two trillion dollars into the economy um, for coronavirus coronavirus relief as well as this economic security angle, right? This idea of paycheck protection they call it the PPP or the Paycheck Protection Program. The idea is that that, that they're they're trying to keep people working. For this interim period so that we don't get a massive disruption in the economy and that when we get to the other side of what's going on in the in the health side of this um, that the economy will still be largely together so there's a there's a big program on loans for participating commercial lenders that between you know a few weeks ago and and the end of june um, there there are some loans available to to folks that become grants the, the really great piece of this is that there's loans available to keep people on the payroll that then become grants and you don't have to pay them back. Um, and all of that uh, guaranteed by the Small Business Association. Um, so Jeff, can you forward that? Yeah. And, and so there were folks actually o over the last few days that were calling me going, how, you know, wh where do I, where do I apply and how come, how come it's not ready? And there, there was originally an announcement that, You'd be able to go to the bank on Monday. I actually, I actually had a customer who who made an appointment on Monday morning, and he said at nine o'clock, I'm going to the bank. I'm going to get this going. He was like right on top of it, and uh, they weren't quite ready. But there's been an announcement today. This thing literally changes every day. Um, that as soon as April 3rd, which would be Friday, um, these loans are going to start to be um, accepting applications. So we see that there's a lot of people out there trying to put their paperwork together, making sure they have. Uh, everything that they need to get on the list for this, right? To have this um, go to them as quickly as possible. The overwhelming thing that that 
that we're seeing in the in the information that comes out is that there's a lot of a um, lot of emphasis on getting this money out as quickly as possible. So they they want to make sure that that the money lands in the right people's hands with in in time to actually make a difference. Um, so Jeff, if you could forward one more one more screen, yep. And so so I'm not a lawyer. Nobody at Surefire is a lawyer, right? There's no lawyers on this call, and we're not trying to dis disperse this kind of uh, information as you know, we know that this is right for you. We kind of want to make this uh, information available and give people the resources to kind of figure out what's available for you and what is the right thing. So we thought the best way to do that would be to just show you what comes out of Congress, right? This is a United States Senate committee that helped to write this bill. And so they put out a document that kind of goes through and answers a lot of these questions. So Jeff, next. Um, and so there's 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 a bunch of questions about who um, who who can apply for this you know assistance right and business entities that were in operation on February 15th right so back at the beginning of when this coronavirus thing was became an issue um, it, it's a it's about small business right up to 500 employees which in in our client base represents almost everybody I would think just about everybody would fit under that 500 employee thing. Um, it also, uh, it, you know, if you're a sole proprietor or an independent contractor, um, you're also eligible for this kind of thing. So there's, there's reasons to apply for this and reasons to talk to your banker, almost no matter who you are, right? If, you, if you've been impacted by what's going on out there, it looks like they've cast a very wide net here and a very wide ability to, um, you know, to help people get through this. And the idea is, okay, we need we need to, you know, keep payroll moving right now, keep as many people in, in, in place. They're, they're, they seem to be kind of trying to freeze the economy in place a little bit. And then a few weeks down the road, when things get a little more normal, um, people will be in a in a better position to, um, you know, come out of that. Um, I, I actually had a client um, a week ago who who sent me a text, and he had heard of this, and he it was he had heard about it for the first time. And the text that he sent me was, this not only will help me today, he said, but this will make me stronger on the other end. He said, I will come out of this a stronger company. And I really like that attitude because it, you know, you're in a position where it looks tough, right? But, but he's going to take this to, to be able to, to you know, do some things with funding that help him be a stronger company and use the time to, to make sure that when things do get back to normal, that he can, he can be a better company. Um, so Jeff, could you, yep. And so there's a loan size um, determination and, and it looks like up to $10 million can be borrowed on this. You know, it would seem to be a lot of money when you're thinking about, you know, two or two and a half months of, of payroll, right? 250% of your average payroll cost is what's, you know, what's available here. So there's, there's this, the payroll component of this, if you've got a large payroll, um, it, it looks like you you know you've got an opportunity to to cover a big piece of that, Jeff. Um, and then the, there's eligibility requirements, and you know we don't want to get too deep into that, but but it looks like there's large portions of payrolls that are um, eligible, up to a hundred thousand dollar earnings from the people who work for you. Um, and then there's pieces of payroll that aren't eligible, so that's why we're we're recommending that if you're if you're going to do this and and Going back to what Mark said earlier, um, this really applies to just about everybody. Um, you know, go talk to your bank and and your your accountant, and and they'll be able to help you through exactly what piece of this um, applies to you. All right. So it's two and a half months um, of payroll from from your la the last year, uh, not including utilities or or rent and mortgage. Right. So there's also a utilities and a rent and mortgage interest piece. That is that is covered under uh, the stimulus that's being being sent out here as well. Um, uh, businesses with less than 500 employees. Um, there's a self-certifying thing I talked about earlier, and, and I see this in the information that that comes out. They they really want the the money to hit the street quickly, so they're they're not putting a lot of a lot of red tape around this thing. It's not, the the idea is not for this to take a really long time to get this money out because it really needs to be there you know, quickly. Um, so payroll, utilities, rent and mortgage, 
and no repayment required. So if you if you qualify for this, um, this becomes a grant, right? And if it's not going to get, uh, you know, it's not going to become a grant. If it becomes a loan, it's still a 10-year loan with 4% interest. Um, so this is uh, just very, very popular. Uh, people are very interested in this, and uh, it looks like a very aggressive program. Jeff? Um, and so just a few other things that, that kind of build into, uh, uh, you know, a lot of what I heard from, from Mark earlier, um, and some of the things that we're seeing as we talk to these customers. We've, we've got, you know, a, a lot of um, what we call digital marketing strategists, and we're, we're literally meeting with everybody every day. Uh, we meet at the, in the first part of the day every morning, and we, we kind of have this meeting about what are you hearing? What are people telling you? And internally, we have teams. We have teams focused on, um, you know, what's the internet traffic look like out there? What, what, what kind of lead flow is happening in pay-per-click advertising? What are the trends that are happening in the marketplace so we can understand how, to, how that impacts what we're doing, right? Um, I heard from, from some folks inside the other day about competition, right? We, we track, we do a lot of pay-per-click advertising out there. And we're tracking competitive activity across the internet. And we see that in a lot of these businesses, uh, some folks have taken their advertising down. Um, and what that means is that the people who are still engaged are seeing less competition. Um, that, that adds up to a little better you know, conversion rates on some of these things that people are doing. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, if you, some people have decided to you know, sit it out. Some people have decided to you know, go after it in a, in a different kind of an environment and seeing improvements in that. Um, we hear a lot of a lot of people thinking about seizing the opportunity. I, I, and you know, don't get me wrong. There are people who are saying I'm going to wait this out, but there are certainly people that are saying, you know, this is an opportunity for us. Um, I've had I've had a lot of those kind of conversations with. Okay, let me use this time that I've got here to make my digital presence the best it could be, and and kind of do the do the most I can. While I've got the opportunity to do that, and then come again, come out the other the other side looking better. Um, Google, uh, for those of you who have who have been on our email list, you've probably seen we're talking about what Google is doing. They've they've decided to to add a whole pile of money, something like eight hundred million dollars to the to the advertising world over the next six months. So they're, they haven't announced exactly what that looks like, and we'll be getting a little more specific once we know. Um, but they're, they're in the form of rebates, Google is going to be, gonna be uh, giving people money that they can then use on the Internet between June of this year and the end of the year. So if you've been active on um, paid advertising with Google uh, in the last year, since January of 2019, um, then you've accrued some credits, and that money will will then begin showing up in your account as literally a grant that you can just put towards your advertising. So that's another piece of the kind of what it's looking, what it will look like when everybody comes out of this thing. Um, it, it's never been more of an online world than it is today, um, and and I think you know it, it used to be that kind of the you know a lot of things were happening online. And then there was this offline component. Well, for the last couple of weeks, the offline piece has pretty much been turned off. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of online uh, adjustments. Mark was talking about it earlier with the use of technology. Um, I've personally been running some, some seminars with people on teaching them how to use technology to make presentations to customers in their homes when the customers don't want to invite them into the home um, that allows them to kind of be in business at a time when that might be more difficult. Um, so there's a lot of that going on, and, and this move to virtual appointment is something that's been talked about for years, and now is getting a little more momentum, right? We're, we're certainly seeing a lot of people trying to figure out, okay, how do I do this, and, you know, what would I do, and do I need to buy anything, and, you know, what's the mechanics of actually getting myself set up to be able to do this? Because we think that's going to be a part of, of what people do for a while. Um, I think about this whole idea of staying in front of prospects and customers. You may not be able to um, actually go, you know, talk to somebody today, but you can certainly talk to them. You can have them in your in your pipeline, in your orbit, right? And talking to them while 
things might be, you might be under a stay at home order, um, but you can still be, be nurturing those relationships and getting to a place where you can turn that into a you know, business at the end of this, um, rather than trying to start something up brand new at the end of this as if you weren't around. Um, that'll be a lot hotter and that will have a timeline to it. So, so there are, there are folks, I was literally on the phone with somebody about an hour ago talking about the idea that, that lead flow right now for them is good. And what they're doing is they're talking to these people now and doing some online presentations and, and, you know, just kind of keeping things moving, right? Keep, keep everybody in contact so that when it comes time to be able to do business, you know, in a, in a more normal way that you can, you can do that. Um, we've, we've done a lot of, and we're still, we're still seeing that evolve, but this idea of COVID information on websites, you know, letting your customers know, um, what you're doing in order to make yourself kind of fit into the, the new rules, if you will, or the new, the new engagement, um, parameters. And we have a lot of people that are kind of trying to figure that out. I've seen I've seen companies that I work with that have changed that message three or four times in the last two weeks as they evolve into what they're really going to be doing and trying to get used to you know what's the new thing look like and how do I want to communicate that to my customers and you know it's a first time for everybody we've never had this thing happen where we've got to make these adjustments so there's definitely um, you know been an evolution in that and I see it becoming much more you know friendly and welcoming at the same time as letting people know, you know, these are the things that we've changed. This is how we've adjusted our interaction with customers so that it's a, you know, healthy and safe thing that's going on at the same time as us being able to, to help customers do whatever they want to do. Um, and then the, the, probably the biggest thing that, that's going on right now is this whole getting in line for stimulus support. Mark was talking about it earlier, the next three to 10 days, is really important in terms of getting your paperwork together and making sure that you're in the in the system for that so that you can um, have that money land in your account as early as possible and have it do the most good so we're, we're you know we definitely see that that's going on as well so with with that uh, i'll um I'll, I'll end my piece of the con of the conversation here i appreciate everybody coming i hope this has been useful um, we will distribute this information through through the the normal channels. I'll leave uh, Stephen to kind of define what those are, um, but that that will be happening in the next little bit. And you know, to the extent that there's any questions or if you need anything for from any of this, you've all got contacts with digital marketing strategists. Uh, if you if you want to call me, I mean, I'll certainly you can you can do that as well. Um, and our our goal here is to help everybody get to the other side the best that we can so that when you know things resume and become more normal um, that everybody will be in a better position than they were when when this all happened so with that I thank you very much and and I look forward to speaking to you soon